All right, so at this point, you might be asking why we're doing step functions at all. It just seems crazy, right? We're introducing this whole new technique to solve problems that we solved in other ways. Well, the reason is that we'd like to broaden the set of external forces which we can apply. Right? The idea here is that we're going to think about mass spring systems or their inductor resistor capacitor analogs, right? <laughs> And we're going to think about externally forcing them in ways that are incompatible with the method of undetermined coefficients, right? Remember that the method of undetermined coefficients needed functions that were like e to the at, um, cos bt, sine bt, and t to the n, or um, sums and products of these things. That's what we were relegated to. So we want to model forces that act like this guy over here. And what this is is a strongly localized pulse of external force, something that is short-lived. Anybody that's doing the second order theory um, final project will see the variation of parameters technique. And that technique is compatible with this sort of external force. Um, at the same time, the Laplace transform technique is maybe more applicable over a wider range of problems or a wider array of problems. And so um, we're going to get around the shortfall of the method of undetermined coefficients with this thing. Okay. The main point here is that these sorts of forces can be processed with integration. And well, if we think back to this guy, this external forcing function right here, the question is really going to come out of like what exactly is this function. And so when I'm thinking about what exactly is this function, and I'm going to process it with integrals, well, it's not going to necessarily be easy to write down or process the associated integrals. Right? And so what we really want to get in tune with here is this idealization. And the idealization is known as the Dirac or Dirac distribution. Distribution is a mathematical word which has a meaning, and it has meaning in terms of integrals. It turns out there are um, theories where we generalize the notion of function so that it can handle um, derivatives when it ought to have not handled them before. And in that area, we talk about generalized functions and distributions. But let's just look at the key quantities. There is going to be this, this Dirac distribution is represented by this delta right here. And so we want it to have three key properties. The first property is that this function delta, which is a, going to get a little parameter here, t naught, this function delta is going to be zero whenever t is not equal to t naught. So what that means is that I'm going to strongly lo localize the pulse to just one instantaneous moment in time. And that is something that we call ideal localization in time in this case. Now, the next thing that we want to do is quite likely the area under the curve of the function that I'm talking about has meaning. And so the second, and this is the very strange part of this distribution. It's not actually a function, but this is the notation we'll use. And that is that it's normalized, meaning if I integrate from t naught minus epsilon, where epsilon is some positive number I should write here, to t naught plus epsilon, what that means is I'm integrating over the point in time when the ideal lies pulse occurs. And so when I integrate that area under the curve of this instantaneous pulse, I will get one unit. Okay, at the end of the day, how is this used for us? It gives rise to something called a sifting property. The sifting property says that if I perform this integral over the pulse, and these guys here should have t naughts, then, or and I integrate against another function, then what I get is out of all of the heights that that function f of t represents, I only select one of the heights, the height associated with the time at which this pulse occurs. Over le to the left here, I have this schematic, and what the schematic shows is if this orange curve here is my f function, and down here on the t-axis, I have my t naught. the moment at which this delta function fires off. And I'm going to use the function here, or the word function, because it's just easier to use while you're speaking it. But what we need to understand is that this is not a function. There's no function that does this. Right? And so what this function does is that if it is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, represented by this yellow curve here, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, except for this one point t naught, then at that point, all of the area under the curve is amassed under that instantaneous moment. That's a weird part, right? It should just be a line segment of some sort. Then if I integrate delta against some other function f, woo then the outcome of that is that I select only the height associated with f at that very specific moment. So one height out of the infinitely many given by f. OK. So that is the notion of a Dirac function. And what we want to really think about here, and maybe I'll write this over to the side as the key point, and that is that if the time scale for our external forcing function is much less than the scale of system dynamics, then the external force can be approximated with delta. That is the key piece. Right. So how should we interpret this? We should interpret this as taking a hammer and hitting our mass spring system with it, because when I hit the mass spring system with this hammer, the force is going to be imparted into the mass spring system at a very small moment in time. And well, this delta approximates that, and it's a little strange in that um, it treats that moment of impact as an instantaneous moment, but look at what we gain as a consequence. The sifting property basically means that when I see delta arise within an integral, I'm going to be able to just cut right through that integral without, any do without actually doing any anti-differentiation. So the delta function acts like an instantaneous pulse of energy into the system given by some sort of force, maybe by like a hammer, and as a consequence, it charges up the system so that the dynamics will ensue, and it has especially nice behaviors um, with respect to integration 
condition, and that is if we want to suspend our disbelief. If we do not want to dis suspend our disbelief, then we have to get to the theory of generalized functions where this would be treated as the limit of a sequence of integrals applied to a particular function space. That is too much for us right now.